As part of Chinese Culture Night at the Las Cruces Academy on May 23rd, 2017, Vince Guchik, a board chair, and Llewellyn Kay, head of the school, presented a slideshow on their trip to China experiencing the modern and the ancient parts. They met their son, uh, David, and his then girlfriend, now wife, E, at the airport in Beijing where they had flown in. Uh, and together we toured China, met her family. Let's start. Okay, here is modern Beijing. Uh, it's just over the mountains. You'll see all kinds of mixed development here. You'll see private housing, uh, factories, fields, and so on. Oops. There we are. There's E and David. We're at the Lu Songyuan Hotel and the Silk Road Hotel. They are getting ready uh, for E to go to the U.S. Embassy to renew her visa to study in the U.S. at Ohio State University in engineering. This is a wonderful place, great breakfasts. We started our walk. Here we are uh, passing street food vendors, which is still very common. It's very nice. Um, I'm skipping a lot of pictures here. We took 5,500 pictures. There's only about 28 here, I think. Okay, you can see me, Vince, uh, in the blue shirt, white pants. We're on the Great Wall at uh, Mutong. Was it? Um, well, I'm trying to remember the section of the Great Wall. I think it ran about 8,000 miles. It's in sections. Part of it was demolished during the Cultural Revolution. Mao said to reuse the building materials. Here we are getting on the very modern subway, very friendly to certainly English speaking tourists because the announcements are made in uh, Mandarin Chinese and in English. The signs are in Mandarin uh, English, uh, Mandarin characters, pinyin, and English. We're heading here to the Imperial Palace. This is the only time it rained on us. Oh, and by the way, the skies were blue and clear. We missed pollution. Very nice. Here's something you don't uh, often hear about. These are brass cauldrons that are used to fight fires. They're on a pedestal that a fire can be lit under it to keep it from freezing in the winter. Uh, I think there's more modern firefighting equipment now. The tile roofs are quite impressive all over the place. And this is a massive site. Uh, you walk for, I don't know, one or two kilometers inside the building area. There are 27 gift shops inside the uh, Imperial Palace. This is a section of the Seven Dragon Wall, a, a famous tile construction that was brought to Beijing from various areas. Bronze bells are very popular throughout history in China. That was the Nanluo Guxiang shopping area, which is right next to the uh, traditional hutongs, of which some are left. Now, if you haven't tasted durian, you're in for a treat if you can hold your nose. They smell like sewage, but they have a custard uh, texture, and they smell like strawberries and kiwis and so on, and a little bit of garlic. Okay, here we are inside the bell tower. It's very tall building uh, traditionally used for news and alarms. It faces across a long promenade uh, the bell tower where there's a 73 ton bell. Now here we are in modern, very modern China. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this plaza. It has the largest glass-faced facade of uh, a skyscraper in the world. We went up to the sixth and seventh floors for exhibits on Buddhist sculpture like this, as well as uh, traditional um, artifacts. This is a bronze drum stand. And the other part of the exhibit 
on another floor was calligraphy. Writing, calligraphy, education have always been a big deal in China to today. <laughs> I suppose it is. That was in the Temple of Heaven Park. Uh, he's not a performer for money. He's just having fun, as are many other people who are playing games, talking, playing music, uh, people enjoying their time. Okay, now we are on the first of the high-speed trains that we took. This train from Beijing to Zhengzhou, uh, which is the capital of the province that he is from, Henan. Uh, this train hit 303 kilometers per hour routinely. That's 190 miles per hour, and it is smooth as silk. It outdoes even the Shinkansen in Japan. Here we are in Henan, and uh, it may surprise some people to know that northern China uh, has wheat as its major crop, not rice. They, they do eat rice, but this was the harvest season, and every field was just packed with uh, wheat. Ah, okay. To the right here is E's father, and in the middle, is his business associate who was uh, also the driver. This was the first of our very many feasts. Uh, we asked how many other people were coming. This was for us. Uh, food as a, a means of hospitality is foremost. We got to his parents' house uh, at, let's see, third from the left is her mother and Llewellyn and I are wearing these beautiful silk jackets that they gave us. Two of the family friends gave us this elaborate embroidered scroll, which we treasure. It's now mounted on our wall at home. We traveled around her hometown of Dancheng. Here she is in front of her, I think it's primary school. By the way, she ended up as the top student in her province of 97 million. She's not only beautiful but smart and cheerful and kind <laughs> in the town market this woman uh, was very amused at, at seeing us uh, she said foreigners buy my chicken i want a foreigner to buy my chicken of course this was translated for us chinese uh, tourists now dominate the whole scene because they now have money we were vastly in the minority as uh, foreign tourists, which is fine with us. Her family uh, was almost apologetic, saying we have to do this ancestor ceremony. Uh, we were so pleased to be included in it. The grandfather of E is buried just to the left of this scene uh, in a mound in the field. So they uh, have to do this um, obeisance. There's another mound from another family in the middle there. And um, the government is discouraging all of this because it takes up valuable space. Each family has a narrow strip. I think it's only about uh, 20 meters wide, so they can't afford to use too much space. Here's another feast given by uh, E's uncle. Uh, I made the mistake when they asked, do you like wine, of not specifying red wine because ordinary uh, wine, as they call it, is this 53% alcohol premium drink. The Chinese love to have everybody get drunk together. It shows trust. Well, I don't like being drunk, so I had to skip that part. We went out in the evening. Here's his mother in the public park there. Uh, many women especially will go out morning and evening and dance to a boombox of modern tunes. Her family took us to many places uh, in the area. This is, I believe, the Fuxi Mausoleum. Uh, it's another very long uh, site with many gates. 
At night, everybody in Dancheon gathers outside. Certainly uh, on these summer evenings, it's, it's packed. It's, it's a lot of fun. We went to Shaolin Temple, a famous site. Most of it is a reconstruction. This is a guardian figure, another common thing in Chinese culture. And this is more modern uh, in the sense of having a big school for martial arts. Many families will send their, their sons and some daughters to learn martial arts, often if the children are hard to control. Um, they're aiming for maybe one or two slots in the movies. So this is sort of like high school football in the US. You want one chance in 10,000. We went to the Longman Caves where there are thousands of carvings of Buddha. This is the very largest one, the Lokana Buddha. It's, I believe, about eight meters high. In Luoya, we uh, stayed in a hotel that David and E had found online, the Friendship Guest House. What a palace for $50 a night. Uh, the room for, let's say, Llewellyn and myself uh, was about as big as our house with three showers, two bathtubs, a computer, a TV, free food in the mini bar, a bajong table, a glorious view over the city, free breakfast. And when we went to breakfast, um, one of the servers came and saw that Llewellyn and I were older. So she asked E if we needed special food, we might be diabetic or hypertensive. It's very, very nice. This is our view from the 21st floor, looking down on the people doing Tai Chi in the uh, little park below us. Well, big park. Then we went to the Luoyang Museum. Um, interestingly, E's family said we had introduced them to their own civilization uh, because they didn't go to museums. And look again at the accommodation for foreigners. This is a complete translation of the site in English. Points of interest. That is the claim to be the largest musical fountain in the world. There's one in Xi'an that claims the same. We saw that. Uh, the music is uh, Little Apple by the Chopstick Brothers, International Song of the Year in 2014. And as a scientist, I'm intrigued by the powerful green lasers because I know how tricky they are to, to make. Okay, this is what one of their high-speed trains looks like. We took another one here to Xi'an, and we arrived um, yeah, mid-afternoon in evening. Everybody gathers around the beautiful and well-lit uh, bell tower. People are talking, playing music, um, selling things, selling food, and just having fun. Now, <laughs> in China, when we were with friends or relatives of E, we could not buy anything. These two are students uh, whom David and E knew at Ohio State. They took us out for dinner. This is in one of the super modern shopping malls. And of course, one has to go to see the Terracotta Warriors in Xi'an. There are 2,000 that have been reconstructed and I say reconstructed because when they were buried 2,000 years ago, the uh, overburden probably was meant to collapse and uh, you know, keep everything safe. Farmers found some remnants and soon it was discovered that there were these thousands of very realistic terracotta figures about life size. There are about 8,000 total. Um, they are slowly piecing together all of the remnants. Uh, it's pretty classic. That's what they looked like when they were put in the uh, 
burial ground, they found traces of the paint that was there originally in various, yeah, various figures. So they figured out what they had been painted as. Ah, this is the mother of a student whom David and E had again at Ohio State. She took us to this fabulous restaurant and uh, bought us a meal where everything was done in the Qin Dynasty style. And very dramatic introductions of each dish. At the end, they dressed us in the robes of people, well, officials in the Qin Dynasty. Okay, then we flew to um, Yang, well, we flew to Guilin. And from Guilin, we took a taxi Oh, maybe 100 kilometers or so, to Yangshuo, which is famous for the Karst Peaks. Actually, they extend for a vast area. Llewellyn had her first fresh coconut there. It's quite a gathering place uh, in the evening. People are doing everything. There's shops of every kind. There are people selling these green lasers. There's people selling uh, very interesting model airplanes, radio-controlled. And here are the Karst Peaks on the Lee River. There's also a show, a famous show here, uh, organized by the guy who did the Olympic ceremony in 2008. But it, uh, the river was too high for the boats to go through, so we just toured around. We, we enjoyed biking here. In the uh, evening, you'll find uh, a bit of nostalgia here. This woman is dressed as one of the Red Guards. She's selling popsicles, which are one of the few um, luxuries that were available during that time. After Yangshuo, we went to Guangzhou, which is Old Canton, in the Chen Academy of Arts. There were practicing artists. This fellow paints with the side of his hand and fingernails to create beautiful paintings. <laughs> This artist makes his own drawings exquisite and then will layer about 20 sheets of paper and cut out the designs. Um, they're very, very finely done. Here's an interesting situation. There are four guys in masks in black uh, from Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. Uh, they were gathering a crowd. They didn't say anything. Now, we never saw police in uniform, but after a while, a police van pulled up and they told these fellows or indicated somehow that they could not be in public with masks. Uh, he saw what was going on and and intervened. She talked to the uh, Russians, Euro Belarusians, Ukrainians in English. They were making a promotional video for themselves and they just wanted to, you know, have the opportunity. She then talked to the police in Mandarin and explained, and the police said, okay, you can do this, but then you must leave. So she's very kind and, and thoughtful. Here are the skyscrapers lit up at night with changing patterns of light. They have very interesting architecture. What I haven't shown you is some of the other side, which is all of these vacant apartment buildings that were overbuilt. China has a realty bubble that dwarfs ours, so they're going to be interesting times. We took a side trip to Kaiping, where Chinese who had made money overseas, particularly in the U.S., sent money back to their families to buy these or to construct these 
fortress-like houses against the bandits. And they adopted all kinds of architectural styles like this one from India, and then there's Greek and Roman and so on. Uh, we ended up our trip in Hong Kong, which runs differently from the rest of China, at least for the moment. He had already taken the, uh, the subway from Guangzhou out to the airport uh, and went off to visit her friends in her old college and see her family some more. So David and Llewellyn and I were here in Hong Kong. Uh, the Hong Kong Museum of History is a fascinating place. It's my recommendation for probably the best museum ever. Uh, it's not the biggest, but it tells a coherent story wonderfully. By the way, these are bun towers in the Spring Festival. People make buns with lucky characters on them and people climb the towers. Now Hong Kong is uh, a wash in money at least among certain classes. This is what you can rent as a car from Avis, a Porsche or a Land Rover. Here's the end of our trip. Um, okay, this was just before that Hong Kong segment. He is going back to, uh, to Hebei and we are going to Hong Kong and then back home. So that's just a bit of our story. There's so much more to tell.